Hey, what's up guys? Hardleg Joe here with the What a Deck Profile for the UA Toolbox 2016. I'm just going to go through everything in here and then I'll explain how it works. We're playing one Dreadnought Dunker, one Blockbacker, two Rival Rebounder, one Goalkeeper, three Mighty Slugger, three Perfect Ace, three Midfielder. For our spells, we have three Galaxy Cyclone, one Reinforcement to the Army, three Signing Deal, three Terraforming, one Turnover Tactics, three The Monarch Storm Four, three Powered Jersey, and three stadium for our traps three reckless greed and three penalty box extra deck we have number 39 utopia beyond number 25 force focus photon strike bouncer gauntlet launcher tyrus keeper of genesis number 61 volcasaurus artifact durundle number 12 crimson shadow armor ninja one number 33 chronomaly machu mech one utopia one ragna zero one black ship of corn one silent honor arc heartland draco and castell the sky blasting musketeer Side deck I'll go over in a moment. So this deck is a toolbox, a UA toolbox, as the name implies. If you're unfamiliar with the UAs, they all run on the basic premise. If you control one UA, you can return it to the hand and special summon another UA. Um, all of them are high-level monsters, except for midfielder. So generally, you want to normal summon midfielder and then use him to special summon out these guys. Now, there, some of the UAs are offensive and some of them are defensive. So generally the tactic is to summon out one of your offensive uh, monsters, attack, and then switch them out for a defensive monster during your opponent's side. It's kind of like switching sides. It's all sports theme. These are The UA stands for Ultimate Athletes, if you didn't know. So Midfielder, as I said, he's your normal summonable monster. He does have an effect that lets you swap out one of your UAs during either player's turn for another UA in your hand. It's useful occasionally. But uh, I rarely make use of it. It's, it's mostly good for attacking multiple times in the battle phase. As for the other UAs, like I said, some of them are offensive. The offensive ones, Mighty Slugger, this is my main attacker. When he attacks, your opponent can't activate anything until the end of the damage step. That means no Honest, no Mirror Force, no Flip Effects, no If This Card Is Sent To The Graveyard, Do This. Anything that activates during the, the damage step is completely out. Um, so he, he really stops a lot of things. He's really good against, like, Burning Abyss because they can't activate their effects. Cosmos can't activate their effects. That's why we run him at 3. Our other offensive card, Dreadnought Dunker. He has slightly more attack with 25. He does piercing. And when he deals battle damage, you get to destroy one card on your opponent's side of the field. He's pretty good because he, he lets you clear their field more, but he's susceptible to all those things I mentioned before. Generally, this runs on more of, like, a, a sort of lockdown tactic. But uh, if you're running someone who, who doesn't have those mirror forces or has more face-up spell traps that you want to get rid of, this is the guy you go for. As for our defensive cards, the main one is Perfect Ace. Perfect Ace can negate a spell trap or monster effect once during your opponent's turn uh, by discarding a card. And we have a couple cards that are useful in the graveyard that you can use as discard fodder. And we have ways to get cards back out of the graveyard. So he's generally what you want to do. He'll let you lock down the most. We also have Goalkeeper. He has a quick effect that says during your opponent's turn you could target any UA monster you control and once if it would be destroyed it is not destroyed. So if you can get out perfect ace and goalkeeper he's got more defense with 2800. You could stop them from running over your perfect ace and uh, still be able to negate their things. We've also got blockbacker with 2700 defense which is pretty nice. He says once per turn if your opponent would special summon monsters you could change their battle positions and if you do negate their effects. And that lasts forever. Their effects are just negated as long as they're on the field. So he's really good against certain decks, especially like Pendulums and stuff. They summon everything out and it's just all shifted to defense. All all effects negated. Pretty nice. The reason we play these guys at 1, they're only useful in certain situations. Being able to attack and not have them activate anything is almost always good. Being able to just generically negate whatever you want is almost always good. These are sort of situational. You can search them out with your field spell. Um, the way the field spell works is whenever you normal summon a UA, you can add a UA from your deck to your hand. So if you can get your midfielder, every time you normal summon midfielder, you're adding something from your deck to your hand, and then you swap it out for one of your offensive or defensive cards, and you'll have midfielder next turn to just normal summon again. So you can add these to your hand, same thing with goalkeeper, he's only useful in certain situations, so being able to just add them whenever you want is really good. Also, these two at least are level 7, which means they require two tributes. The rest of these are 5 and 6, which means you can use them with the Monarch Storm 4th. If you have something that you can't get over, you tribute their monster for one of your cards. And of course, if you have your Stadium, you're getting your Search because you Normal Summon. So the one monster I haven't talked about yet is Rival Rebounder. He's not really offensive or defensive. He's sort of like a play extender slash recovery. 
when he is normal summoned or special summoned during your opponent's turn. So if you use his effect with midfielder, or if you just normal summon him, you could special summon another UA from your hand or graveyard. So a good tactic with him, especially if you don't have midfielder, if you've got one of these two out, you can tribute one of your monsters to normal summon rebounder, and then you immediately special summon the monster you just tributed back. And because you have a normal summon, then you can activate UA Stadium. So he's how you can continue your plays, even if you lose your midfielder for some reason. He's also pretty good for getting back your blockbacker, your dreadnought dunker, your goalkeeper. Uh, if they get sent to the graveyard and you need to get them back out, you can special summon with them. So that does it for the monsters. For the spells, we've got our spell trap removal in the form of Galaxy Cyclone. I picked this over Twin Twister because it's useful in the graveyard. You can discard it for perfect ace. It's also got, you can banish it from the graveyard, destroy a face-up spell trap. Uh, our main trap that we play is the UA penalty box. This is also your searcher. You can use this to add any UA spell card from your deck to your hand by banishing it from the graveyard. So if you activate this, you can destroy it with your own Galaxy Cyclone if it's already in the graveyard. Um, and again, like the synergy with discard for perfect ace, then destroy, and you could search one of your other UA spell traps. Uh, the reinforcements of the army, it's just a way to search out midfielder. I usually don't like one-ofs, but if it's just search power, it's fine. It's essentially just like playing a fourth midfielder. We've got three signing deal that lets you summon a UA from your deck. It's effects negated, can't be used as synchro or ixie material, and you lose attack, or you lose life points equal to the level of the monster times 300. So there's a little bit of a cost there. Obviously, if you use it for midfielder, that's almost nothing. That's like 1200, which is worth it to summon this midfielder and get your plays going. Alternatively, you can use it, like I said, to get your rival rebounder going without having to have midfielder. Because you only have the one search for turn with UA Stadium, this is also good as sort of like a supplementary search. Um, say you normal summon your midfielder and you special, like you get Mighty Slugger, attack with that, and it's like, oh, well you need a defensive card. What you can do is use your signing deal to summon out like Blockbacker, and then even though its effects will be negated, all you can do is special summon midfielder by returning this to your hand, and then special summon blockbacker by returning midfielder to your hand. You just swap them out and it's like his effect his effect just goes back to normal. So you're good. We're also playing three terraforming, that's just to get the stadium, which I already explained why the stadium's good. We've got one turnover tactics, which you can search with penalty box. Um, if you control two or more UAs with different names, shuffle as many monsters on the field as possible into the deck, then special summon UA monsters with different names up to the number of cards you shuffled into your main deck. But those monsters can't can attack this turn. Then your opponent special summons from their deck the same number of cards that they shuffled into their main deck. This is a really, really good card, but it relies on you having two UAs, so it's not always good. Um, it's difficult to pull off at times, which is why we only play it one. If you could search it out and you have a way to have the two monsters, it's a great way, it's especially to break up like blocks and stuff like that if they have like a Beals or something. Because it only counts the main deck monsters, it'll shuffle their Ixie and Seekro monsters into the, into the extra deck, and they just get nothing back. Um, if they do have main deck monsters, if you're playing like a Blue Eyes deck or something, then you can basically tag out for Blockbacker. When Blockbacker comes, like, you will summon your monsters first, so Blockbacker will be on the field, your opponent summons monsters, and then you can activate Blockbacker's effect to shift them into defense mode and negate their effects. So you beat a severe advantage it, uh, once you get this out. It's just a matter of actually getting this play off a lot of times. Um, I already said the Monarch Storm 4th, you can use it to summon any of your 5s or 6s. Rival Rebounder, a Slugger, a Perfect Ace, um, oh, and Goalkeeper, but you rarely want to normal summon him. Uh, UA Powered Jersey, this is our attack booster, this is a lot of times our win condition. Equip only to UA, it gains a thousand attack defense. Also, if it battles an opponent's monsters, any battle damage it inflicts is doubled. If the equipped monster destroys a monster by battle, it can make a second attack this battle phase. So, you put this on Slugger, he goes up to 33, he can attack twice, he deals double battle damage, it is just, like, devastating. If they have two monsters with, like, only a 1,000 or 2,000 attack, you can deal massive, massive amounts of damage. Um, of course, there is a little bit of a letdown to this. If uh, this is still equipped during your standby phase, you banish the monster. Fortunately, if you return the monster it's equipped to to your hand, you can also return this from your graveyard to your hand. So, you want to use this, but you also want to make sure that you have one of your defensive cards. So you can put this on Slugger Attack, and if you don't OTK them then you can swap out for Perfect Ace, and you'll get this back for next turn. You can attack again. Finally, we're playing Reckless Greed. This is just draw power. 
Um, this deck needs a little bit. It can brick at times with such so many high monsters. You've got a lot of ways to swap them out with midfielder and signing deal and the monarch storm forth, but you still brick occasionally. This hopefully alleviates some of that. Uh, I picked Reckless Greed because with this deck, once you get UA Stadium, every time you normal summon, you're just adding another monster. So if you can draw and then get into this and midfielder, you don't need your draw for the next two turns because you're going to be generating advantage anyway. Oh, and I guess I forgot to mention, Penalty Box also has an additional effect. It's actually a really great trap all around. At the start of the damage step, if your UA monster battles an opponent's monster, banish that monster until the second end phase after this. Um, which is really good generic removal. Of course, it'll come back in two turns, but with how much damage you do, two turns is usually it for them. Um, and like I said, if they destroy that, then you can search it. Most of the time, you're just destroying it yourself so you can search, or discarding it so you can search. But uh, setting it, having a card that you could set and just forget, like if it gets destroyed, great. If not, even better, because then you can banish their stuff. It all works out. The extra deck is just a big combination. We've got some fours in case we get two midfielders. We've got a lot of fives because both Perfect Ace and Mighty Slugger are fives. We go into them more often. Um, and some sixes. I didn't put a seven in there. I kind of wish that I'd put like at least one big eye. You might want to add that on your own. Um, but really, you you barely go into the extra deck. But it is nice to have one, just in case you run into those situations. They have a Beals, and all you have is two midfielders. Like, well, you can get rid of it. It's nice to have that option. The side deck is where this, this deck really comes alive. One of the points of a toolbox deck is, you know, you only run one of these because they're only good in certain situations. Well, what if you're playing against, like, Pendulums? Well, I would take out your goalkeeper, maybe one of your Mighty Sluggers, and put in, like, more Blockbackers, more Dreadnought Dunkers, that way, like, when they're pendulum summoning, all their stuff's getting negated. When you attack, you blow up their pendulum scales. Just get out the things that you need to battle whatever deck you're doing against and swap them out. Card Card D is also another good choice for this. I'd probably prefer this over Reckless Greed cause it's just because there's less downsides to it. But uh, I put Card Card D in my last three decks, I believe. So I just wanted to swap things out again, but this is just as good. Uh, likewise, if you want to swap things, the UA turnover tactics, sometimes you don't want to storm forth, sometimes you don't want to attack. Having these in there, if you're playing against a slower deck, uh, a more stall-centric deck, or maybe a more swarmy deck, using this can be really good, maybe swap it out for something like that. Um, Forbidden Lance is good. Uh, I played it the last time I played it, but their spell traps have really gone down. It's more about monster effects these days. So this wasn't really as useful, but if you're playing against a deck that has more spell trap support, swapping this out for maybe like penalty boxes or again for your turnover tactics uh, couldn't go wrong. Uh, finally, we have Magnum Shield, which is always like, if you really wanted to make this a cheese OTK deck, you put Magnum Shield in here. It's uh, equipped to a warrior type monster, it gains attack equal to its defense or defense equal to its attack. All the UAs are, are warriors, and some of them like... You know, with with uh, Perfect Ace, if you give him Magnum Shield, he has 4,000 attack. If you equip him with Power Jersey, he goes up to 5,000, does double battle damage. Like, that's just insane. Of course, like, if he gets killed, then you're up shit creek because you just lost two equip cards. But if you wanted to go, like I said, pure cheese, a lot of these monsters will have absolutely ridiculous attack with uh, Magnum Shield equipped to them. Uh, oh yeah, and Battle Guard Howling. This is another good one to replace, uh, maybe not Penalty Box, maybe Stormforth, maybe Powered Jersey. Um, there's a couple different things, but against certain, like, effects that target a lot, this can be really devastating. It's when a warrior is targeted for attack by an opponent's monster effect. Target a monster your opponent controls. Doesn't have to be the monster that activated the effect, just any monster. Inflict damage to them equal to the attack and return it to the hand. So if you're playing like a rank 4 against a rank 4 toolbox and they're going to 101 or Castell, you could be like, nah, you take 2100, go back to the extra deck. Uh, really useful, not in every situation, but a great side deck card. So that's it for the UA Toolbox 2016 version. Uh, hopefully these will still be relevant again. I can do a 2017 version of them. These are one of my favorite decks. Um, next week I'll be looking at gadgets with the ABC Dragon Cannon, hopefully, for sure this time. Uh, unless something goes terribly wrong. So until then, good luck, have fun.